further ado, uh, we, we'll be looking at about 10 minutes of Bible study following worship uh, today and for the next uh, few weeks after this. That'll take us right up to Holy Week, uh, and, and then we'll take a break from Bible study for uh, the Easter week. Um, but we've been in the Gospel of Mark for quite some time, and so I thought for four weeks we'd take a, a quick look at uh, different sections of Mark's Gospel. Uh, now the, the thought here is that we're kind of trans... Uh, Transitioning from worship uh, time into the Bible study time. I know maybe that's a little bit different. Uh, uh, raising your hand or talking or asking questions in, in church maybe a little bit different. Um, there'll be a little bit of that dialogue, a little bit of back and forth. The point of this 10 minute study on Sunday after worship is sort of like the introduction to the study. The study throughout the week will get a little bit deeper. I'm going to create a video on this topic that will go out to everybody to be uh, watched and used at home, whether alone or with your family or spouse. And then also we'll meet on Zoom on Thursdays to take this topic further. So this is just kind of like the, the introduction, the, the first taste or the teaser. And that's what our, our point will be right now. Mark chapter 4 is full of seed parables. And so we're going to take just a brief look at uh, the first of these seed parables and, and talk about it today. Uh, and this is the question that I want us to kind of consider uh, in the, for the next 10 minutes. In the Lord's Prayer, which we just prayed, we pray, Thy kingdom come. And how does it come? How does God's kingdom come to you and to me and to anyone? That's the point of these seed parables. So we begin. Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in, uh, out on the lake. While all the people were along the shore at the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables. So picture the, the scene sort of to start out. Uh, it's kind of like an amphitheater, I guess you would say. You know how the, the seats kind of go up and back and the stage is low. The stage was Jesus on the water teaching the people gathered on the shore. And he said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And that's all we get for the introduction. That's, that's the introduction. That's all we need. Uh, and this is one of the few parables where Jesus then gives us the explanation very quickly after. So we'll take the explanation at the same time. Later in the same chapter, he explains the farmer sows the word. So the word is being scattered like seed. And I want you to think about this. How is God's word scattered in the world? I'm sure there's a, a number of, of answers that you can give. Uh, if anybody wants to give a, a, an answer, that's, that's fine. Otherwise, to just think about that. How does God's word go out into the world? Certainly, it's proclaimed in a church and people come to the church. Certainly, it goes out in, in publications or, or you see it on signs sometimes or it's on TV or on the radio. It goes out into the world that way. Uh, other times, it goes out simply by one-on-one -on -one conversations with friends or family. It doesn't have to be uh, this long teaching about the Bible, but, but simply sharing uh, who Jesus is and what he's done and why you love that. I'm so thankful that I don't have to be worried about death. I'm so thankful that Jesus has forgiven all my sins. That's the seed going out in the world, being scattered everywhere. And then he gets into the details now. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. And then he explains that statement. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes it away. The word that was sown among them. First thought, that kind of sounds a bit unfair. That's not fair. They didn't have a chance. Satan came and snatched it away from them. I think this is the most common of all the examples Jesus gives. He calls it the path. The, the hard, worn, uh, every day, everyone walks it, the, the very common path of life. And just think how easy and common and familiar this is. How normal of a life is, is it to be filled with all kinds of things like jobs and families and, and entertainment and hobbies and, and, and all kinds of struggles and issues. So many of all these things that life becomes full, so full that there's no time for anything else. Or no need or want for anything else. I got what I need or I've got too much struggle ahead of me to think about it. I think this is the most common thing. How someone could go their entire life. And how many times along the path did, uh, did an invitation to church or a, or a message about God and, and His Son Jesus come to an individual 
where it was just, you know what, I, I got everything I need. I don't need anything more. Or how many people lost in other religions of the world think I've already got what I need spiritually. And that, that seed of the gospel is just sort of tossed aside along the path. Satan came and snatched it away. I think of all the examples, this is probably the most widespread and the most common and familiar among us. Do you know anyone on the very common, hard, uh, worn, well-traveled path of life like that? Can you think of a time in your own life? The next, uh, before that, Paul said, uh, this is how Satan works. He uses all sorts of displays of power that serve as lies, and wickedness deceives those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth. And the seed is snatched again and again. The next example, the rocky soil. Some seed fell in rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched. They had the, the root withered because they had no root. And then Jesus explains it. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. And when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. And that underlying section is probably the most important of this example. That trouble and persecution comes because of God's word. Whether it's being associated with it, uh, in, in the world, in the workplace, or amongst a group of friends, whether it's certain teachings of God's word that we just don't care for, a person doesn't want to be associated with that, not with the way uh, things are happening in the world, I can't be associated with such a message like that, or just the perceived weakness of it. Because of the word and the persecution and trouble that comes because of it, whether inwardly or outwardly, it's not for me. And again, to think... Do you know anyone like that, or can you think of a time in your own life when that temptation was there? And really, this is the exact uh, correlation to what we heard in worship last week. Jesus said in uh, Mark chapter 8, Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me in the gospel will save it. That's the direct uh, correlation, that the exact struggle that's taking place. The rocky soil, trouble because of God's word, ah, I'm abandoning ship. Jesus said, losing their life, struggling for me in the gospel is salvation. That's the struggle right there between the two. The third example he gives, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant so that they did not bear grain or bear fruit. And then Jesus explains that others are like seed sown among thorns. They hear the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Uh, I think of the Ten Commandments that we just heard in worship. Uh, how the, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods, and the last commandment, you shall not covet the things of, of the world. That's exactly what he's talking about here. And whether or, not, uh, whether or not a person has all of those things, or they don't have all of those things, the deceit is still there. Either the having of it becomes the idol, the first commandment, or the not having it becomes the, the, uh, the coveting, the ninth and tenth commandments. Either way, the deception of the world is there. And what gets choked in that uh, idolatry or coveting, it's the word getting choked from the individual. Paul told Timothy that those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with all kinds of griefs. And again, it's, it's either in the having of all of it or in the not having of all of it. Either way it is true. And then the fourth soil, the last soil. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times over. And Jesus explains, Others like seed sown on good soil hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, 100 times it was sown. Um, uh, notice that nowhere in this parable has Jesus taught what, uh, uh, how faith works, how salvation comes to a person, how they are brought to believe in him as Savior. He doesn't address any of that in the parable. He just simply says, this is how seed of the word gets scattered throughout the world, and these are the different ways that it lands. 
And really what's the, the obvious question that he's wanting all of his hearers to be asking in their minds? Question that they're asking. He wants them to be asking about themselves. Which soil am I? Which one am I, Jesus? And then either walking away and saying whatever and leaving it behind or asking Jesus to explain it further, to tell them more. Which soil am I? You and I and everyone in the world are already by nature hard path soil. We're already by nature rocky, shallow soil. We're already by nature thorny soil. Each and every one of us. And before we take this text, this parable, and turn it into an evangelism parable, which we're going to do, but before we get there, before we talk about going out anywhere, Jesus has made you into good soil. And he did it by the message of the cross and his resurrection. It's just like the cleaning of the house that we heard in the sermon. Uh, he did it through that message that was brought to you. That's how your soil went from uh, hard path, rocky and thorny, into the good soil that he tilled. And use all of the gardening imagery you want, the tilling and breaking of the soil, and fertilizing, and caring for, and watering. Use all of it. He's, he's done all of that in the gospel for you and for me. And now, let's take it in an evangelism way. Another way to say all of this is that there is no good soil until the seed comes. So we may think, like, we got to get this message of the gospel as a church. we got to get it out to all that good soil out there in the world that needs to know about it. No, there is no good soil until the gospel comes to them. There's only hard path, rocky, and thorny soil. And it's the gospel that makes it good. So the seed needs to go out to the hard path. It needs to go out to the rocky. It needs to go out to the thorny. That's where the Holy Spirit works. Paul said, who's Apollos and who's Paul? Who are these servants who do this work? We're only servants doing uh, uh, through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos water, uh, watered it, but it's God who's been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field and God's building. And let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for cleaning house, for, for turning hard path and rocky and thorny soil into the good soil uh, where the gospel of Jesus dwells among us. Uh, we thank you for your work of salvation in us. We ask you to bless our efforts in scattering the seed yet further. The work is ours. The efforts uh, that we put into it are ours, but the results are all yours. Uh, and so, Lord, bless our, our congregation and our ministry. Thank you for this opportunity to be fed and nourished uh, this morning. Uh, may we all go out in peace and joy uh, according to your will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.